Hi guys, it's me, Professor D, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. On this video, I'm going to be covering hypocalcemia. Now, if you haven't watched hypercalcemia, make sure you go back and watch it. You don't have to necessarily watch it before this video, but I encourage you to keep all of your fluid and electrolytes, the hyper and hypo together. Don't just mix it up. It's just confusing. So make sure you go back and watch hypercalcemia if you haven't done so already. Also, please like this video. Do it now so you don't forget. You're going to love it. Just press that like button, press the notification button so you'll be notified every time a new video is released. Because every Sunday at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, I always release a video where I'm covering questions. But during the week, I try to do teaching videos daily. I try. Now, if I have a spare 15 or 20 minutes, that's what I'm doing, making a video for you. But the times are random. So when you press that notification button, you'll be notified as soon as a new video is released. Don't forget, I have audio lessons available for you on my website, nexusnursinginstitute.com. And almost daily, you guys can catch me covering a variety of nursing topics on my other social media platforms, such as TikTok, Instagram, and Facebook. So make sure you guys check that out. Without further ado, guys, let's get started. Hypocalcemia. So a patient that is hypocalcemic, their blood calcium level is going to be less than 8.6, okay? Hypocalcemia, that's low serum calcium. Whenever we're talking about these uh, electrolytes, right? We're talking about them in the blood. Is it high in the blood or is it low in the blood? So when you see hypocalcemia, don't think of calcium in the bone. Uh-uh. Emia, E-M-I-A, in the blood. Low calcium in the blood. It can result from any condition that's associated with the parathyroid hormone deficiency. The patient who received multiple blood transfusions can become hypocalcemic because the citrate that's used to um, keep that blood from clotting used as an anticoagulant the blood binds with calcium and it decreases ionized calcium levels so that's important to know that that patient with multiple blood transfusions that can cause that patient to be hypocalcemic let's keep going it says um being hypocalcemic this results in increased nerve excitability. Remember when we talked about hypercalcemia and how when um, the patient was hypercalcemic, those nerves and muscles were what? Weak. But now that we're talking about hypocalcemia, it's the opposite. They're what? Excited. They have sustained muscle contraction or tetany. That is on NCLEX. That is on HESI. That is on ATI. It's going to be on your nursing exam. You better know it. That is important clinical manifestation of hypocalcemia, okay? Clinical signs of tetany. Remember tetany, that's that muscle contraction, right? Clinical signs of tetany include Trostec um, and Trousseau sign. You guys have to recognize that. So Trostec starts with a C and so does your cheek. So Trostec sign, that's the one where you run your finger or put something along their cheek and they go like this right? Because of that increased contraction. That's your chose tech. Your tro I can't pronounce that word. You see, you know what I'm talking about. Now, trousseaux. Trousseaux is the one when you take that patient's blood pressure and then you see their hand like going like this, okay? That's that trousseau. That's the technique. That's the increased muscle contraction. Take a look up here. Here goes the chose tech. That's the cheek one. You see how they're going like that, right? Chose tech starts with a C, so that's your cheek. And then here goes Trousseau's. Trousseau's is that twitching where the hand goes like this or it goes like this when you take the blood pressure. Make sure you understand and recognize that they go with hypocalcemia and not hyper because you're going to see this again. Don't say I didn't warn you. So let's keep going. So trostec sign is contraction of facial muscles in response to a tap over the facial nerve in front of the ear. Trousseau sign refers to carpal spasms induced by inflating blood pressure cuff on the arm. Two very important signs. I don't know why I don't have them highlighted. Let me highlight them now. Other uh, manifestations of tetany are... <gasps> Laryngeal strider. Guys, you see laryngeal strider. That is a medical emergency. Okay. Strider, that sound, that strider lets you know that their airway is about to close up very shortly. Laryngeal strider, dysphagia, 
paresthesia and numbness and tingling around the mouth or in the extremities. You have to know all of these signs and symptoms. You have to recognize that they are, they go with hypocalcemia. You see, I put a star next to it. Nursing interventions. Let's talk about some nursing diagnosis, diagnoses for that patient that's hypocalcemic, that has all of this increased muscle and nerve excitability. Risk for electrolyte imbalance, of course, because they don't have enough calcium in the blood. Ineffective breathing pattern. Of course, ineffective breathing pattern. Hello, laryngeal strider. Absolutely. Acute pain. That acute pain is because those muscles are contracted and it's not giving that patient a break. That hurts. Imagine your muscle staying contracted the whole time and not relaxing. Yes, that's painful. Risk for injury. Why? Because everything, the nerves and the muscles are excited. That can cause that patient to go um, into uh, seizures. That can cause that patient to have um, uh, uh, tetany, right? So that is risk for injury and potential complications. Those contractions can be so strong. You got fracture, breaking of the bones respiratory arrest from that laryngeal strider that you better rec be able to recognize. So these are important nursing diagnoses for hypocalcemia. And if you've been following my videos, you know, um, not too often do I go over the nursing diagnoses. I just skip over that, let you guys read it on your own. The reason I'm covering it in this video is because when it comes to hypocalcemia, um, these test writers tend to ask about nursing diagnoses in related to hypocalcemia. So I wanted to make sure that you guys understood this. Nursing implement, implementation. Matter of fact, before we hit the implementations, let's take a look at um, the clinical manifestations again for hypocalcemia because I can't stress this enough how important it is for you to know the difference between hypo and hyper. I already covered this in my video for hypercalcemia. Let's talk about hypo, okay? Primary hypoparathyroidism. Remember, guys, you have your thyroid gland, then you have your para thyroid gland. The thyroid gland, when you think about the thyroid gland, you think about metabolism, but when you think about the parathyroid gland, what do you think of? Calcium. If the patient has hyperparathyroidism, they're going to have hypercalcemia. But if they have hypoparathyroidism, they're going to have hypocalcemia. So what else? Um, elevated phosphorus. Yes, because we know phosphorus pulls the um, calcium out of the blood and back into the bones. So if the phosphorus is elevated, yeah, that's going to make the patient hypocalcemic. Biophosphonates, we talked about biophosphonates in, um, um, in hypercalcemia, okay? Biophosphonates do what? Make that bone stronger. That calcium that was in the blood goes where? Into the bones to make that bone stronger. Loop diuretics. Okay, in loop diuretics, you l l lose potassium, but you also lose other electrolytes such as calcium. Chronic alcoholism, that's an important one, absolutely. Signs and, um, so these are what, excuse me, these weren't clinical manifestations. These were um, what can cause hypocalcemia, excuse me. So now let's talk about clinical manifestations. Again, hyperreflexia muscle spasms, numbness and tingling in the extremities and region around the mouth. That numbness and tingling, that's what, that's called what? The paresthesias, okay? Chostec sign, trousseau sign, laryngeal and bronchial spasms. It can even lead to strider, tetany, seizures. These are very important for you to know. Now let's talk about the nursing interventions. Nursing interventions. So treating mild or asymptomatic hypocalcemia involves, so let's stop right there. So if it's only mild and it's mild to the point that it says asymptomatic, so the patient's not really exhibiting any symptoms. They have hypocalcemia, but it's just mild. They're not symptomatic. We're going to start with diet. We're going to teach them about diet that's high in calcium rich foods ca um, and vitamin D supplementation. Why? You need vitamin D to absorb the calcium. Um, if they're symptomatic, they can be treated with IV calcium gluconate, gluconate measures um, to promote CO2 retention, such as breathing into a paper bag or sedating the patient can control muscle spasms and other symptoms of tetany, because remember, tetany is a very serious problem. 
Patients taking loop diuretics may have to change to thiazide diuretics to reduce the excretion of that calcium because they're taking the loop diuretics. Yeah, we're getting rid of the potassium, but we're also getting rid of calcium. So they might have to switch to another type of diuretic, such as thiazide diuretics. Closely observe any patient who had thyroid or neck surgery in the immediate postoperative period for period, uh, manifestations of hypocalcemia because of the proximity of the surgery to the parathyroid gland. Think about it. Your thyroid glands right here and those four little nodules that sit right there behind the thyroid gland are your parathyroids. So absolutely, you better be checking them very closely if they had thyroid surgery. Just like it says, because of the proximity to the parathyroid gland, you're going to be watching for signs and symptoms of hypocalcemia. Matter of fact, that patient had thyroid surgery. You better believe you're going to have an airway kit right there at that patient's bedside. And that's it for hypocalcemia, guys. It wasn't that hard. It is not as hard as you think. And the way that you see I'm reading the book and I'm explaining it to you and I'm stopping at things that are important, that's how you're supposed to think when you're studying, guys. I know because I see your comments. I see this all the time. In your mind, you think you need me right next to you reading and you don't. I'm teaching you how to do it yourself. Take those skills and make sure you're reading your book. Anyway, don't forget, guys, please like this video if you haven't done, uh, done so already. Please help my channel grow. How can you help my channel grow? If What I'm doing for you guys, if this is having a positive impact on your life, all I'm asking you is to please help support me. How can you support me? share my videos, refer my videos to somebody you know, maybe a nursing instructor, maybe a coworker, maybe another nursing student, maybe a whole cohort. Please help my channel grow. I ask that of you. Um, don't forget, I have audio lessons available for you on my website, nexusnursinginstitute.com. Guys, thank you so much for watching this video and you guys will catch me on the next video.